Hello, hello. My name is Anastasia Tennant and I matriculated in 1983. I read Literae Humaniores, then did a law conversion degree, and having worked for a short time in private practice as a tax and private client lawyer, I moved in-house to the National Trust dealing with planning, land and charity law. Whilst there, I was involved in acquiring objects, buildings and land under the Acceptance in Use Scheme, a tax incentive whereby instead of cash, one can pay inheritance tax or one of its predecessors with important objects and archives, outstanding land and historically important buildings. I then moved to the Heritage and Taxation Department at Christie's, where I advised on all fiscal issues to do with chattels, including the tax incentives available as part of government policy for saving and preserving the UK's national heritage. After nine years, I moved to the other side, poacher turned gamekeeper basically, and am now at the Arts Council, an arm's length body funded by the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. I work in the museums and cultural property team on all statutory cultural property functions. The team has a unique facet to its activities in acting as a bridge between public and private ownership, pursuing a pattern of even-handedness which seeks to balance the interests of both parties. So my experience from both the private and the public side is invaluable. We are basically the baby of Sir Nicholas Goodison, who sadly died in July. He was a British businessman, chairman of the London Stock Exchange from 1976 to 1986, and an important supporter of the arts. In 2004, he recommended to government that a one-stop shop be established to administer all statutory cultural property functions. Export licensing, the evaluation of preeminence for conditional exemption, a deferral of tax, acceptance in lieu, cultural gifts and private treaty sales, and also the government indemnity scheme, and to provide free and be a major source of impartial advice and guidance to owners and museums on all the programmes it administers to facilitate basically and provide public access to the UK's national heritage. The post involves principally saving national treasures for the nation through tax incentives, export controls, and facilitating access to those treasures by providing government underwritten insurance, that's government indemnity, for loans to UK museums. The overriding principle in what I do is public benefit. So I'll summarise the schemes and on the slides there are photographs of highlights saved for the nation over the years through all the schemes. Acceptance in lieu, as I said, provides a means for private property to come into public ownership at no direct cost to the museum or gallery which becomes the new owner. It is not a gift, rather it's simply a method of paying tax by a form of barter rather than by cash or cheque. The nation then gives the cultural or historic object, outstanding building or land, to a suitable body which will own it for the public benefit. Effectively, the scheme gives museums and galleries an increase to their purchasing capacity. This usually arises following a death. So there is also a lifetime scheme called the Cultural Gifts Scheme, which was introduced in 2012 as part of the government's wider emphasis on encouraging philanthropy in the cultural sector. We also assist with private treaty sales, which are tax-free sales to museums, and we deal with conditional exemption, which is a tax deferral to enable owners of important objects and buildings to retain them in return for providing public access to them. In fact, government policy is to encourage owners to keep their important objects and maintain them at their own expense and in return provide public access to them. When sale of such objects becomes unavoidable, then the other tax incentives kick in to encourage the, those owners to sell or offer them to the nation. The assessment of the objects is undertaken by a panel of experts called the Acceptance in New Panel, which we serve. The Arts Council is also the licensing authority in the UK for all cultural objects over 50 years old leaving the UK. 
The purpose of this export control is to provide an opportunity for the UK to retain cultural goods judged to be of outstanding national importance that would otherwise be exported and to provide a guarantee of the legality of the export. If goods that are being exported are considered to be national treasures, their export is referred to the Reviewing Committee on the Export of Works of Art, a non-departmental public body which we also serve. It considers whether objects which are being permanently exported from the UK are national treasures, and if so, whether their export should be delayed to allow a UK purchaser some time to come forward and make a matching offer to buy the treasure and keep it in the UK. The acceptance in lieu scheme was established in 1910 and reviewing committee was set up in 1952. The main principles of both have evolved to meet changing times, but the fundamental principles have been constant. With acceptance in lieu, it is identifying which objects have real importance or are preeminent to use the scheme's terminology or national treasures for the reviewing committee. What is important in my role is winning users' confidence, being able to negotiate in the public interest and ensuring value for money. The acceptance in new scheme is now the single most important source of museum acquisitions. Last year, it helped acquire just under £65 million worth of national treasures for the nation. Some particular highlights from working at the Arts Council. Uh, in 2011, the artist Lucian Freud died, and dealing with his estate, which included many beautiful objects, has been the biggest and most interesting case I have worked on. As a result, there is now a major painting by the French 19th century artist Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot in the National Gallery. Beautiful bronzes by Degas in galleries in Cardiff, Liverpool and Leeds. Lucien Freud did not keep his own works, and the artist he most admired was Frank Auerbach. The collection he assembled and which was offered in new was shown together in a wonderful exhibition at Tate Britain in 2014 and has now been given to museums and galleries throughout the UK, from Aberdeen to Bristol. The acceptance in new scheme has brought this multi-million pound collection into public ownership and it is now being enjoyed by a wide public. So 95% of the time working in the arts has been tremendously rewarding and colleagues that I have worked with have a passion to share the excitement and pleasure that we get from great art with others. There are drawbacks, of course, working in the public sector that I don't need to spell out, but the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks and being involved with great paintings and many beautiful objects is a great privilege. The team I work in has many facets to its work. But as I said, they focus on a single purpose, ensuring that the UK public has access to the best of our heritage, whether as part of a permanent UK public collection or by display in our rich programme of exhibitions. Thank you.